Hey everybody, welcome to the Mirko Movie Guys. I'm Clint Chaffer and this is my buddy Chad Weeks. And we're a couple guys who like movies and like to talk about movies. Clint, tonight I feel the need. The need for speed. Great balls of fire. Let's talk about Top Gun Maverick. Such a great movie. Can't wait to get into this. It is just adrenaline fun-filled adventure man. absolutely everything you need from a summer blockbuster it was yep. it was so hey let's not let's not uh waste any time here well we have Ex- wasted enough time we can do spoilers though right oh we are definitely doing spoilers definitely doing spoilers let's so, do spoilers spoiler alert yeah. we're going to talk about all the all the juicy details also there's some job for you here Hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and leave us some comments. Tell us about your favorite parts of the movie. We're going to be talking about some fun facts about the movie. Talk to us here. So talk to me, Goose. Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but yeah, uh, also, uh, if you if you are, haven't watched the movie, go out and watch it right now because it's incredible. You need to, no. see it on, need to see it on a big screen. And then uh, come back and watch us, and we'll talk about it. So Absolutely. So with that, grab your popcorn. Fill up your drinks. And enjoy the show. All right, Chad. Top Gun Maverick, man. This has been a movie in the waiting. Yeah, absolutely. We well, this is something that was supposed to come out prior to prior prior to the whole pandemic thing. Uh, there was a lot that was supposed to come out, and uh, this is one of the big ones that got really pushed back. And typically, when I some a movie gets pushed back, it's it, I get nervous because they have to do reshoots and. Things happen and it just doesn't turn out well. Well, the funny thing is, if uh, if you go clear back, Tom Cruise talked about making this remake in 2000. Really? And then somebody, and they got it into like uh, pre-production or maybe writing or whatever it was. Uh, and I can't remember who it was, but somebody died. And it ended up like stalling the whole project out. Uh, and then... They started picking this thing back up uh, here several years ago to to actually end up uh, end up making this. So, I mean, this has been it's been a grind to make this film. Yeah, absolutely. And and the thing is, you, again, you never know how this is going, how these are going to work out, how these sequels are going to work out. Um, a lot of people are in the in the uh, idea that you just you know it was a perfect movie back in the day. Just leave it. Don't don't do any remakes. Yep. Don't do any uh, uh, sequels. Anything like that. But. Me personally, I'm I'm in the I'm in the the, the boat of uh, let's keep doing this. Like uh, this was a this was a lot of fun. Like this is what you can do. It doesn't always work, but this is what you can do. It, it's really interesting. It's almost it's that the right amount of time yeah. had passed to make a really good remake. I think Correct. if they would have tried to do it in 2000, I don't think it would have been as good. I think you're probably right there. Like it it put enough time uh even like just for the storyline with Rooster with Miles Teller. Yeah. Uh that whole aspect it, it almost just built that into it. Yeah, and I don't I don't I don't think Tom Cruise in 2000 is who I want to be the leader of this movie. I mean, Tom Cruise has been great throughout his yeah. entire career, but I just don't think 2000 Tom Cruise is who I would want. Was that like jumping on the couch on Oprah Yeah, Winfrey? that would have been that would have been like Katie uh what is her name? Uh, Katie Holmes. Katie Holmes yeah. era. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and, and and I'm not not saying anything bad about him because, like I said, I've I don't know of any Tom Cruise movies that I don't like. So, I, his his acting chops have never faltered. Nope, exactly. like and I don't care. Just, I I'm, people are going to tell you that you know, like he chooses good roles, which he does, and they're going to give him a lot of hell because of whatever reasons. You know, he maybe whatever his his act. If if he's in a movie, I want to see it, and I think he's a he's a serious actor. Whether you uh, whether you believe it or not, you know, yeah. he's he he really gives a hundred and ten percent. Every movie, and and you know, like some people, you know, like you know, the, they may look down on an actor for going through uh, different phases like that. But uh, I tell you what, can you imagine the pressure? I mean, oh, a yeah. guy that started at a super young age was a superstar, yeah. like throughout he's the whole time. Really known. Yeah, I mean, like I couldn't imagine just the expectations that everybody would set yeah, on you. Exactly, so. and and now like these movies are all because of him. Like you know, the, the, like the Mission Impossible stuff. Like he's the one that's that's driving the driving force of he's all been this. like some of the, like the like even like the initial funding on some of these things mm-hmm. like he's been able to kick off and and the other thing too is if you look at just some of the during the pandemic aspect a lot of the shutdown like he did everything he could to make sure that his sets were open and people were working for and sure and he i got mean a, he caught he, he, he caught a lot of help for that too because he was you know 
he fired some some uh, some crew members because they didn't follow protocol. Didn't follow the protocol. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But like he said, he's like, all it takes. You is shut one- this down, a thousand people lose lose Co- their jobs. Correct. Yeah. So. It was like you got to take this seriously, and that's what yeah. I love about Tom Cruise is he takes it seriously. This isn't you know he's not gonna he's not gonna phone it in every every role he has every movie he does he's given a hundred percent you know from beginning to end he's he's a true. Uh, he loves what he does, and he's really going to give it all. Well, I tell you what, we've spent like the first like you know two minutes on this, uh, just totally standing over him. So we probably ought to just jump into the actual movie yeah, itself. Yeah, absolutely, you know? for sure, so, for sure. Yeah, we yeah. could sit here and talk about how great uh, Tom Cruise is for yeah, I, for a I, whole episode. I would because so. I, yeah, we could go through all Tom Cruise movies and and well, well, before we jump completely into it, I gotta say, hats off. I mean. I shaved my mustache off yesterday like an yeah. idiot, and yeah. you shaved it for this episode. Yeah, and so, the thing is, I told you I was going to do that. That's on you, man. I know. That's, I know. That's, I wasn't even thinking. That's just bad right there. Honestly, that I, I made a little trimming accident, yeah. and I just had to get, get yeah. over it. Yeah, so. my wife's going to hate me for this, because yeah. my wife hates the mustache. She really does. Yeah. Yeah, well, that happens. Yeah. So uh, so let's just jump into this. Yep. Uh, this movie... Um, I, I want to start out by saying I think I'm not giving this a rating yet. We'll wait until a little bit towards the tail end. But uh, I think this is one of the best theater movies I think I've seen in probably ten years. I feel like that's the best way to put it. Uh, I think that this is the way I like to say it is this is exactly what a blockbuster summer blockbuster oh. should be. I mean, it was high adrenaline. It was a, a ton of fun. I I would I would totally agree. This is this is exactly what you go to the movies for. Big bold. Fast action, like I, I love it. Well, and that's the thing. I compare it to like uh, when I think of like big theater movies, I go always go to like Infinity Wars, right? I mean, I think yep. that was like just a, a pinnacle of of movie yep. theater movies. But the thing is, uh, that that is even different than what this is. Yeah, this is. I had trouble sleeping like four hours after watching Top Gun because I still had adrenaline running yeah. through my body. Like yeah, yeah. It, was, it was so intense that I have not felt that in hardly any other movie I've watched. Infinity War uh, and uh, Endgame both were a lot of fan service. Yep. Um, and they, they were built for a certain genre of people. You know, whereas Top Gun, that's... Everybody knows yeah. Top Gun. You know, even if you haven't seen Top Gun, you know this is the reason you're going to go watch Top Gun, the original Top Gun. Um, I heard I was talking to somebody. He's like, I haven't been to a movie. I think the last movie I saw in theaters was probably the original Top Gun, <laughs> and I'm going to go see this one. <laughs> yeah. He said, but he said, let me know if it's any good, or worth doing that. And I, Mike, for sure, go go watch it. Yeah. Theaters, yeah. yeah. If you I, haven't yet, go see it. That's what I've tried to tell everybody. I'm like, you you have to go watch this. Yep. Like this is a movie that is. Like, we we put like our must see and things of that nature. This is a must see in the theater. For sure, for sure. Like, uh, for sure. I don't know if anyone has a sound system good enough to to no. mimic what you. No, nope, that's what I say. If you watch this on your laptop, you know, streaming it on your laptop or something like that, or on your forty two inch TV in your living room with people being, you're going to miss the excitement of this. I'd like to go see an IMAX. You oh, know, like, yeah, I feel yeah. like this would be a good yeah. one to go see an IMAX. And I'm not an IMAX guy, but I feel like that'd be a good one. Yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> well, I tell you what, you know, we talked about trying to get this movie kicked off. Uh, I read uh, that they actually had uh, five different release dates for Top Gun Maverick. Really? What yeah, was the first so one? Do you remember? I can't remember. It would have been probably... I think it was fall of 2020. N- so. that's like, yeah, 2020 or something, but they just kept kind of pushing it, you know, yeah. six months at a time. The other thing to keep in mind of how expensive this film is versus the original. Uh, so a little fun factoid here. Uh, original Top Gun cost $15 million. This Top Gun, $150 million to make this movie. So Inflation. Inflation, <laughs> yeah. But no, I mean, but uh, it, it shows, though. I mean, th- there was literally, they didn't take shortcuts. I no. mean, everything you're seeing in this movie is basically everything besides like missiles flying at, at jets. Everything's real. Yeah. Like very, very limited CGI. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is the true, um, I can't think of his last name, but John from Jurassic Park. This is a true uh, quote of spared no expense. Yeah. You know, that, that's what it yeah. is because Tom Cruise, he's not, like I said, he's not going to go half-hearted into anything. He's going to, He's going to give it to his all, and he really invested in this one. He believed in it, and God bless him for making a great movie for us all to enjoy. Yeah, and the funny thing is what you'll notice going into this movie, it starts out 
exactly the same as the first. I mean, yeah. like music, like yeah. the cutscenes, like soon as e- I heard everything it, is the chills. It's like the, the here we go. Yeah, like, I mean, it's just a beautiful intro into it, uh, and kind of a fun. I like the story of him kind of being, you know, he's past his peak, he's past yep. his prime, uh, but he's he's now. Uh, testing right and he's a test pilot yeah. which is actually you know like when you think about it a lot of your your top guys that's kind of the the progression right yep. uh, they start going into some of those other other tasks well, ty- well typically they go into like admirals and stuff like yeah. they talk well, about yeah, in there you yeah, know, like yeah, yeah. they go into admirals and situations like that they climb the ranks and he hasn't because he's always been that I think like John Glenn though, wasn't John Glenn like he was like the first guy to break the sound barrier or something, right? Was like, he? yeah, I think so. Like he was also on the uh, the Apollo missions, but uh, uh, yeah, I knew that. But yeah, but uh, I think he was like he was like a test pilot, like the first guy to break no the sound kidding. barrier. I, didn't know I, I think that's, that somebody can fact check me on that, but I think that is. You that's know, cool. That's cool. You're just thinking about like some you know big names like that yeah, that are absolutely risking their lives. So. But I think that's what the, that's what, what's really cool about this is is they didn't. Um, I mean, it wasn't something where he. They they acknowledge the fact that he's an older guy now and he's you know uh, coming in there, uh, but yet they what I what I love about this movie is that they that I expected to be a lot of fan service like I said like with uh, with Endgame and Infinity War and they did some of that. They did a fair amount of. They that. did some of it. Yeah. They did. A, I mean, they did a lot of it, but it was very tactfully done. They did and, a lot of it within like the first hour of the movie. Like that. That's where I, or maybe even the first we like forty five minutes. We finally got to meet Penny Benjamin. So let's just well, throw that, that out that there. Is true. Jennifer yeah. Connelly. Yeah. We got to finally meet Penny Ben, Penny Benjamin, which was great. But yeah. but like what what other like because I, I remember. Well, I mean, so I, I can think of like three things off the top of my head that like I think are definitely fan service. We're doing spoilers, is, so give them to me. Yeah. So you're gonna go. I think the the first opening scene. I mean, just kicking oh, in, sure. kicking sure. in with with for sure. exactly. And I, I worry that they would try and get new music. And, yeah. And it I mean, work. but I just meant like it's like literally like the same yeah. intro, right? So you got a little bit of that uh you roll into rooster who is goose's son miles teller i didn't know that literally was the best cast like person for for that role did that you know that he was I, gonna be playing anthony edwards uh goose's son did you know that he was gonna be playing? yeah i did hear ahead of time before i, I had no there, clue so. i had no clue but i saw him I'm like that's Anthony Edwards, no. or that's Goose's son. That's no. going to be... So literally, Tom Cruise is on record uh, saying to him, or maybe he uh, he was telling this story, but basically saying he's like, if the actor that played Goose and Meg Ryan had a kid, it's Miles Teller. For sure. Like he's For like sure. He's like, as soon as he walked in, I'm like, yeah. well, that, that's that's Goose's son. Absolutely. Absolutely. So such a great, <laughs> a great choice. And the way that they... Uh, his attire throughout the whole thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was like literally a spitting image of Goose, except like Goose was kind of a dork. Yeah. Miles, Miles Teller is not a dork. Rooster was a... No. He was well, awesome. well, 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 but here's the thing, though. Goose also married Meg Ryan. Well, so, that's true, yeah. So you got yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. He, she brought out the cool in him. Yeah. No, I, I thought he was just a, a perfect fit. But anyway, him playing Great Balls of Fire. Yeah. I mean, Which I think that's the most, unbe- or most unbelievable part of the whole movie. <laughs> because kids aren't going to know <laughs> yeah. the words to Great Balls of the Fire. The only reason I've ever heard that song in my entire life is because of Top Guy. Yeah. But... No, I, I did I did think that was that was definitely the the fan service there. And then one of the most talked about scenes of the first of the first movie is the volleyball scene and they recreated it. They so, did do it. I mean, I'm telling you, those are like your big fan service moments that uh For sure. that they they're definitely back, thrown in there. They brought back Vil- Val Kilmer uh in a very tactful way too given everything hey, hey, yeah no I I I think they did the the right thing for Iceman. So. Oh, for sure. For sure. I I, I wish that Fate had played out better than it did, and we could have more Val Kilmer because I would like to have just a little bit of a rivalry there where he's more active and stuff like that. I know that you just can't, so, but I'm just such a huge Val Kilmer fan. You know, like he was my he was my guy. Yeah, it, no, it, he yeah. was. Yeah. yeah. Well, and so that's the the interesting part. There is is Val Kilmer has a he's got some disease or some illness that uh, that now has taken his voice completely out, yep. and uh, he has no voice. But he talks in this movie, and this is one of the the first times I was reading on this that. Uh, they had an AI that actually that wasn't his voice. He can't talk. Yeah. So everything in this movie is actually artificial intelligent using uh, clips of him from all yeah, like so past like, clips I, and everything to then make that voice. That's what I thought. I thought they just went back and got like clips. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, but they said this technology though. That's a cool part about it. They said it's like it's literally 
Uh, it's not direct lines. It's like a compilation no, of it using yeah, his. It's, it's a computer-created voice, but they said it's groundbreaking because it's going to open us up to where these computers now are going to be able to take somebody like Elvis yeah. and now recreate their 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 voice for like a movie or a, 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 an actor that passed away or something of that we've nature. Got enough, we've got enough uh, videos out there that if we lose our voice, we can use our we voice. Can, we can have voices. Yeah. You can record another podcast with me, just sign language yeah. and stuff like that. And the computer is going to be like, no, that's okay. We don't need any of that. Yeah, absolutely. Touche, touche. <laughs> Uh, the other thing too that I that I was looking at was uh, just starting off on that movie. I loved how they made Maverick. They reminded you that he doesn't take orders. Correct. You know, and, sure. and they do that like right out of the gate. I thought yeah. they did it in a cool way of like him trying to fly to Mach Ten yeah. and everything. Uh, I did, I loved the start of that movie. Yeah, absolutely. The enti- well, the, the, yeah, for sure. And it, it starts off kind of. I was I was worried about the first part of the movie because it was literally him on a a, a plane and he's wrenching on it and I'm like it, it was odd it was an odd scene and, and and then all of a sudden they go to the to the the, the speed breaking thing or whatever it was they want to hit Mach eleven Mach ten Mach ten well yeah. they want to hit Mach ten yeah anyway yeah. not and, not below yep not above yep Mach ten exactly <laughs> and they they and everybody knows him really well so they were very stressing of that and as they go through it. Uh, it Totally agree. You got the captain or the admiral coming in or whatever yep. it was to shut him down, and he's got to do it right now. I mean, it was kind of on the nose, but it is right back into this is who he is, it, and I'm going to do this because he's he's doing it to protect people too. That's his thing. Oh, he's, yeah, ne- he's never yeah. doing like you know. He's still going to say that I I'll have you know that my pilot and my reel come or my plane and my reel come first and all that stuff. He's still looking out for them. He just has no regard for his own safety, and he just wants to. How did number one start out? Number one started out with the guy panicking, right? Having a panic attack. It was Merlin. And yeah, Merlin having a panic attack. Maverick, who's about out of fuel, risking his plane, risking him and Goose's life, running up there and just and bringing Merlin in. Exactly. That's exactly right. He was ignoring orders at that time and goes up and at the very beginning of the movie. So like again, like they all same thing. Yeah, they're kind of setting that setting that helping other people out. and And I liked it on this one because uh, with Maverick being the age that he is, right, it goes to show that it's like, yeah, he's more experienced, but he still has that cavalierness, right? Yeah. Like he's that, a Maverick. I mean, Maverick yeah. is alone. Yeah, that's why exactly. he's called Maverick. Yeah. yeah. So I, anyway, I like the way they set that up. That o- or that scene though, when the admiral's coming to shut him down, and he's in that jet, and he takes off on the runway, and he and he pulls up, and he hits the admiral jet wash, right? Yeah. Like uh, as he's taken off. Uh, that that is actually uh, they used a, an F eighteen for that to, for that scene, and then they they made it look like that that experimental jet. When it takes off, it jet washes, and you'll watch in the movie. You'll watch the roof of the guard shack blow off, right? Or yeah. it comes up and comes back down. Uh, it that that was unscripted. That was a set. That F eighteen blew that set apart, and they had to use it in one take. Yeah, and that's just it. That's, that's it. it. Yeah, for sure. Done. Yep, I've heard I heard similar things with uh, uh, Miles Teller. Like there was one time where his his because all, again all these all these jet scenes and stuff they're Are real. real. Like yeah. he, they're not just sitting in like a, a simulation or anything like that. They're really they're really out there flying. And when they do this this technique uh, to fly over the the ridge and drop down, they kind of do a they kind of come up up and, and then roll. Yeah, and do a roll down, yeah. which. It makes sense if you really think about it, but I, I just, you just, I would expect them to go, you know, yeah, you know, quickest line of descent. But I, it makes so much more sense to do it that way. Boom! But it, it is, it makes it so much cooler. And also, you can see Miles Teller immediately. He hits like I heard a, an interview with him where he bounces up, hits his head on the roof, and that they kept it in there. He was scared. He like, yeah. Ooh. But it just shows, goes to show, like. That's they, real. They didn't have his straps tight enough, and Correct. he hits the canopy. And they they literally said though the the director was like, no, he's like it looked awesome. That's that's perfect. That's it's exactly like, what it was. Yeah, that's the real life, and that's what they did. They did again. They didn't spare any expense. They went all out on everything they did, and that's what makes this such a cool well, movie. So here here's the thing uh, on the on the for all the fighter jets, right? Um, all of that is real. When you're seeing the the pilots or the you know the, all the actors taking G force right up to like nine or ten Gs, 
uh, that's all real. Yeah. They're taking that, right? And and Tom Cruise was very strict about that. He's like, whatever we're portraying in the movie, you got to portray on yeah. screen, right? Well, so we have to do this. He's one of those guys that does his own stunts, so he's exactly. going to expect the same thing from his crew. Yeah, and so in order to do this, right, they got to get F- F-18s. Well, there was a little question at some point that Tom was doing his own flying and that has been proven incorrect. Uh, they ended up getting these, of course, from the U.S. military. And the military is actually highly involved in making of this Which movie. Which is wild. Yeah, it's absolutely they're, they're, crazy. Yeah, they're cool with this. and like $11,000 an hour to rent an F-18, right? Yeah. So, so they're flying that. Worth it. Plus, you got to have a military pilot. Yeah. No civilian can touch it, the actual controls of this yeah. thing, right? So the military pilot. Uh, and so they're, they're flying all of those, all of those missions. Uh, or all those scenes uh, again are all real, right? There's yeah. no CGI. Uh, you know, eleven eleven thousand dollars an hour. Just, just because I can't get this out of my head until I I, I cut you off here, and I apologize. But eleven thousand dollars an hour, you know, you figure that's a lot, but that's literally like one one the or no, I could be more than one theater, but one theater at one showing. You know, like of of three theaters or whatever it is. You're covered on that. So for an yeah, hour, you know, so I was like, it's like that's really actually a very good price for a movie like this if you really think about it. So anyway, yeah, I, I and the funny thing is, I like eleven thousand dollars an I hour. Know. Actually, I don't think it's a lot for like a, I don't know, how many millions of dollar yeah. jet that it is, and I don't know how much fuel do you burn in in Correct. an hour? Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like this <laughs> with is with current fuel prices. I come wish, on, <laughs> I wish I could remember because in Top Gun they say that it, uh, you know, it's an 18 million dollar jet or whatever yeah. it is that you're, and that was again, ten, so probably 180 million dollars right now that you're using for this movie at eleven thousand dollars an hour. But anyway, I just thought that like it's originally when you say eleven thousand dollars an hour, you balk at it, but seriously, that's not that bad. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a, no, it's, it's a pretty good rate. And and the other thing too that I that I was hearing on any movie that involves the U.S. military, right? So I mean, like, think how many movies you see, like you know, an aircraft carrier, see mm-hmm. jets or something like that, right? A lot of them. Uh, the military actually has like a department that receives those scripts, and they actually go through those scripts and approve it before they no end kidding. up signing on to it. Uh, and, and a lot of times, unless you're going like really hard against like the military or things of that nature, most of the time they don't do, I guess, uh, they don't do a whole lot of edits. They'll do like little, little requests and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, they actually got to approve all that stuff. That's cool. Actually, that's, that's really cool because they're, they're probably, uh, like fact checking some of that stuff too. No. So it's one of those, like, if, if you want somebody to just go through and say, you know, is this the way it would have went? That's probably the best way to do it right like oh we wouldn't do it that way we do it we, we wouldn't go up and down like this we'd go up and we'd roll this way like, yeah that sort of thing not only fact fact checking but they also want to uh make it within the rules of the military yeah that was a, a thing with with top gun is you have to follow the rules of combat you got to follow the rules of flight yeah they didn't want that to be portrayed any other way right yeah. so like when they break like the floor, right? You know, they always put like we have a five thousand mm-hmm. foot floor, right, or whatever that is. And uh, you're hard not deck. supposed to hard deck. There you go. And you're not supposed to go past that, right? Uh, there are certain of those that like they're like no, we, a pilot would not do that. They yeah. they are trained well enough to not do that, you know. And so they want you to they want to make, keep it believable, yeah. right? Like their people are trained well enough to not do some of those those yeah. different uh, different pieces. But it's just it's fascinating that they're that involved. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, for the for the military to to give in that much uh, and 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 be very uh, receptive of everything, I think is really cool. Just the fact that they it's not only they they agreed to it, but they kind of, I feel like they kind of welcomed oh, it. Heck yeah! They kind of they kind of bought, bought into this. Like you know what, this is cool. What kid doesn't want to become a pilot? Oh now? my goodness! Right? Do you, do you, here's the thing. Do you remember in the original? Uh, I mean, we were three. When that movie came out, uh, but I remember the advertisements for it with the Pepsi commercial, where he's he's riding in the Pepsi or riding in the, in the the cockpit, and he's his Pepsi won't come out of his cup holder to drink it, so he's got a he does the inverted, <laughs> yeah, and does that sort of thing, and, and and it was such a like this movie was so big at that time, uh, I I feel like it was just something that kind of instilled that with everybody because you remember when you I mean like. I would have, I could have told you, and Kayla, I said something to her recently when we were talking about uh, 
jets or whatever. I'm like, yeah, that's a that's a hornet right there is what that actually is. And then, you know, and it's because back in those days, like we would check out books. When we go to the library, we yeah, check out a yeah. book on helicopters and jets and whatever. And I think that it has a lot to do with Top Gun because it was just so. I, I even look at like growing up. I remember I had uh, the uh, the Transformer, the uh, Decepticon Starscream, Starscream right? yeah. which was an F-14 Which is Tomcat, pretty much the best. Right? Pretty much the best Decepticon. That's what I'm saying. Well, I'm but, pretty hands down. But why is that? It's probably because I fell in love with Top Gun yeah. and and all of the jet aspects, For sure. right? For sure. Uh, it, I don't know. It's just a. Uh, you know, it's just think, fascinating. Think, go, go the, the reason that I have these sunglasses right here is because of because of Top Gun. Like yeah. like the, I mean like literally. What is it? Thirty years later, or something like that. Uh, well, I mean, I, I wish it was 30 thirty-six. Years. Thirty-six is because I'm yeah. thirty-nine. But it, you yeah. know, this much this much longer in life, and that's something that still sticks with you. You know, it was. Iceman. The, yeah. Like, there isn't, like, back in high school, you frost your frost your hair because you want to look like Iceman type of thing. So. You did, yes. Yeah, that I is did. correct. Touche, yeah, yeah, touche. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another cool fun fact. I gotta, I just got to keep keep yeah. with these, uh, these fun facts here. Uh, they have stated that things happened in this movie that will never be able to be recreated. Really? And, and it'll never happen again because of what they got the military to sign off to. And one of those, going back to this whole hard deck thing, they got the military to sign off on an F-18 going over 600 mile an hour at under 50 foot. And that was for Tom... Or for so, wait, 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 wait. So it's fl- the, that F-18, F-18 is, is flying... Flying at 600 mile an hour at just 50 foot above the ground. 50 foot above the so ground. So how, how, like... That that was has that ever been done before? I mean, I'm sure it's been well done. in maybe in the military, but not for movies. Like yeah. they would never sign off on that, and for whatever foot reason, just seems like, <laughs> like yeah, like wildly you, low, you, I mean, like, especially at 600 mile an hour. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So yeah, anyway. Uh, but no, the the thing is, uh, that was for Maverick's solo run. Oh. When you see him bouncing back and forth, yeah, that was that run. So was he in that cockpit then? I uh, I can't I, I'm not 100 percent, but I think that was the actual run. Oh, was. he I'm sure he was. Like you know, I'm I'm sure he was, and I'm sure that's the kind of dedication he has to it. He's like, oh yeah, we got to do this this way, and like he's yeah. sitting back there just getting ah man, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. But anyway, they they just said like that will that will probably never happen again in movies, right? Yeah. Like uh, it, it was just really unique on on just what they were saying that like they got approvals for and and everything else, and it's just they're like this just doesn't happen, and for yeah. whatever reason. And I keep going back to like again, just the iconicness of the first one just probably helped that, right? Yeah. I totally agree. I totally agree. Like I said, this is something that's going to like. They, I, I feel like the military probably just thought we don't want to, we don't want this movie to suck. You well, know, isn't like, it a recruiting tool? Oh, for sure, right? Like, for isn't sure. it? It's got to be like a, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I'm just like I can't imagine that there's like well, an abundance of people that are trying to be yeah. pilots, right? I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's there, there's plenty, but uh, that that's probably they're probably wanting yeah. more, right? Absolutely. They're wanting more candidates. So. Tab, Tab, who, uh, who was literally, you know, he, we've had him on the show. The first post that I saw about this was as soon as he as soon as he got out of the theater, he posted on Facebook said, uh, "says Top Gun Maverick was awesome, go Navy because he's a Navy yeah. guy." That sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what it is. Like you don't you don't think that in, take that into effect. It's not the Air Force. No, it's, it's not the, the Air Navy. Force. That's the Navy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but you think about that, and you think about the kids that are watching this and be like, "I want to do that." You know, yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? But let's talk about some of the characters too, because we talked about we talked about Jennifer Connelly and Penny Benjamin who. Was a pretty iconic so, character in the original. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So uh, she wasn't in the original. Though. No, it was just mentioned as what the admiral's daughter or something of that. Yeah. Nature, so right? so in the first the, like the opening scene, you know, uh, they get in trouble for taking Merlin down, and you know, I ignore, and they're mm-hmm. gonna send him to Top Gun, and I can't remember what the what the uh, whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter. They're like uh, in trouble with how many flybys and one admiral's daughter, and then Goose turns around, turn. Betty Benjamin, ah, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he's in his office, when he's getting yelled at, yeah. correct. So they mention her there, and then they also mention her. Uh, Meg Ryan mention, mentions it to Maverick later on, and she's and I'm gonna bl- uh, I'm gonna terrorize this uh, uh, this quote here, but it's basically uh, she says, "Don't think that my, my goose hasn't told me about all your stories. You know how my little goose goes home to bed, and you go out and." Uh, going bal- going ballistic with Penny Benjamin, ah. so that's what it was. So like, there's she was mentioned twice in the movie, like she was this iconic character. 
but you never saw. But who you it never was. saw who it was, and yeah. now you do see it. So that's I think that's really cool that that's who they used to be the person here. And Jennifer Connelly, uh, she did a great job. The, the the her whole role was again, she's not she's not super young. It, she played a perfect. I mean, she was a mom. Yep. And she was very vulnerable and very Tom Cruise ish with her her aggressiveness, like. She was perfect. Well, I, I liked it, you know, because she's like the, you know, she she is a, a business owner yep, too, right? Yeah. Like has yep. her roots there. I, I don't know. Like I I like that little piece because the relationship with him and her wasn't overdone. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't the main aspect of the story. Nope. It was, but it was a nice little side story that was just enough to like, uh, you could you could still even though he's like the old veteran. You could still see a little bit of growth in Maverick, Correct. right? Throughout from the beginning to the end, and Correct. it's like that's that's kind of cool to be able Correct. to show that. And you've heard me talk about how like I don't feel like every movie needs a love story and all that stuff like that. Um, and this is kind of that perfect balance of it because yeah. there is that little love story, but that's not the focal point. Well, we're gonna hit on that, but it's mainly about it's mainly about the guys and the the gals well, it, in in his flight team. I I, w- I mean I think the primary the primary storyline in my opinion is the relationship between him and miles Teller, for right? sure. him and rooster which was uh, which, which was is same thing as the, the original it, yeah but him and goose this is really cool though i i like the i like the dynamic because it was actually a story of of maverick becoming a father figure yeah and it was like breaking through into that into that piece not only having some redemption from from goose uh but also having this like Dude, I'm there for you. Yeah. Right. Like, like I am. I I am the only father figure that you have right yep. now, and I'm here for you. And I just thought, I thought they played that really well, very subtly throughout the entire entire movie. For so. sure. And and then to flip things on the other side is having Jennifer Connelly's daughter, Penny Benjamin's daughter, kind of being the mother figure for her. Yeah. Where yeah, she yeah, says, yeah. you know, kind of gives a don't don't hurt her this time yeah. or whatever. You know, which is a pretty cheesy line, but also it's like. It yeah. fit like and when it, he fell out of the yeah, out of the, exactly. the window Just, and she's standing yeah, there. Yeah, yeah exactly. I like that. It's really cool and it's very well done. Like everything, everything about this movie was really, really, really well done. I feel like they just, like I said, there was a lot of thought put into it, right? Correct. I mean, uh, and they didn't, they didn't just take the easy route the entire way. Um, there's a few things where they probably yep. did, but nothing, nothing terrible. We should have so. took some notes here because I'm going to forget the, the the call signs here, but we're not talking enough about uh, some of the other pilots. Uh, Bob, I can remember Bob's name his, as a cop call sign. He added a lot, but the main thing that I'd like to say is the kind of the antagonist of the movie. Do you remember his name? His call sign? Uh, I don't. Yeah, these the the solo guy um, leaves you hanging. Um, yeah, I always we need the gal yeah. in the chair. We need notes. We need something. Yeah, I should have wrote this. The down. new Ice Man, basically. Correct, but but he had the more of the the Tom Cruise Maverick type yeah, of yeah, yeah. persona. And I'm not kidding you. That guy right there added so much to the movie. I told my wife. Uh, the the gal in the chair. I told her like, whenever they went on their mission, I'm like, I'm like, this guy is gonna be the guy that saves the, the day. Yeah, right? so like, yeah. like, because when they had him cho- chosen, you know, like it was like he's gonna save the day, and I see it, but it's I'm going to love it when it happens, and he does. He added so much to that movie with just being kind of the the Maverick version for this movie. But not like the main character, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, because you are right though. He is almost a new Maverick because he was the best pilot, but he had no leadership. Correct, right? Like, yep. no leadership whatsoever. And and that is, uh, and it, it was like I can't remember his his, his call sign, uh, but uh, it was always like you know he leaves you hanging, right? Yeah, hangman. The hangman. <laughs> hangman. He leaves you hanging. He leaves you hanging. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, hangman. Hey, I'm glad we got through that together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no. But uh, he. He. But he. He was perfect because that's exactly what he did. Was he would be the guy that was very kind of cavalier, very Maverick style, uh, and he was talking about you know and everything. He's like, yeah, well, you can't do this because you're not a good enough pilot and you don't have the fortitude to go through with all this sort of thing, and that's why you're not going to make it. And that's what he was kind of preaching to these other pilots. Because he's clearly better than everybody else, but when it came down to it, he wasn't a team player yet, so and they couldn't couldn't put him on the yep, team exactly. Yeah. And 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 Maverick made him that team player, and it just, I mean, again, the way, if you just listen to us talking about this, it's going to sound a little cheesy because on the surface it is, yeah, yeah. But man, I this is a this is a great movie, absolutely great movie. So I I, I loved his role. Uh, I want to I want to real quick mention Bob. Bob, yes. Yep, yeah, Bob. Uh, Bob is the only actor on that set 
whose father also flew an F-18 Hornet in the movie Independence Day. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although I heard... In, uh, in Independence Day? In, in Independence Day. He's, his dad's an actor, so I don't know. Okay. If he, uh, I don't know. If, would his dad be... Uh, no. No. Okay. But no. anyway. <laughs> no, no. Anyway. Is Will that, Smith? No. <laughs> no. I was thinking <laughs> Yeah, you're Quaid. thinking Den, uh, Dennis, not Dennis Quaid. Not Dennis Randy Quaid. Quaid. Randy Quaid, yeah. Yeah, it's not Randy Quaid. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, but anyway, his dad flew an F-18 in Independence Day. No kidding. Uh, and, uh, but they, I think a he actually had a stunt double do it where Bob was actually in the gym. These, so. these, yeah. Okay. I don't know who Bob is, but you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's cool. I didn't know that either. That yeah. Was, fun, a- fun little, uh, fun little factoid there. So. Yeah. Absolutely. But uh, no, the other thing too, I liked the the team dynamic, right? The I thought the team dynamic was actually a, a change compared to like the original, right? Because the original, it was really you had your pairs almost, and that was it. And this, I really felt like you really kind of brought like the the whole yeah. group together as as more of like a cohesive group. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. But also, I feel like that was the same thing that with 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 one because you got to remember that there was what was it? Iceman and Wolf. Iceman and Wolfman were uh, were in the same plane. And then you had at the end, who was it? It was it was uh, Maverick and who who's riding with him? I can't remember who it was. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, but regardless, I thought he was in a single seater plane at the end of that. I think the last one he was, but he he had oh. b- when they sent him up before he had a reel with him, and I can't remember what his name is. Jester. Oh no yeah. no, no 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 not Jester. Jester was the Jester was the other guy. It was Viper Jester. We can go through all these call signs. It doesn't <laughs> matter. It doesn't matter. I'm just trying to. Miles Teller got to pick his own call sign as well. Did by he? The way. Yeah. So he picked Rooster. So great, it's great. It's perfect. It's, yeah. It's a. It's similar. But it's a little bit more strutting bird type of thing, yeah. so it works out perfectly. It's cocky, yes, a little bit. <laughs> ah. But no, uh, I, 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 I feel like they still did the team thing because that was the the whole point of that one was never leave your wingman, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so that was the whole persona of that one. And then at the end, I can't leave my wingman, you know. So whatever. Yeah the uh, the the whole the whole mission. I also liked like the the prep of the mission, right? Which. Uh, <laughs> a little overlap here, but uh, you know, it was almost like Mission Impossible, right? It's like this can't be done. Yeah. You know, you can't. The machine can't take it. The pilots yeah. aren't good enough to do it, right? Yeah. Like there was all that, uh, and it was fun to see that progression of like, okay, we're yeah. we're doing this. Yep. You I know, just, that, that was that was what it was. It was like I'm going to show you you yep. can do this. And then- well, it's it's very Rocky esque, yeah. right? Like I almost pictured that whole that whole part of them getting ready is like. Rocky, you know, running and jogging yeah. and finally getting to the, you know, to the end, yep. right? And it was like, uh, I just like the build up of that. I thought that was cool. Yep, absolutely. So before we we move too far away from all this, I want to say, I need you to give me. We talked about a lot about Tom Cruise, and I mean he's the focal point of this. So give me your favorite Tom Cruise movie, and I don't, I really don't want you to go Mission Impossible. Like I'm, I'm not saying you can't. <laughs> but I want, your, I want you guys, give me I want, your favorite movie, but don't uh, cancel all these movies. Yeah. Out. <laughs> what, what, here's the thing: what's your what's your favorite Mission Impossible movie? I honestly, I'd probably go with one. I actually I thought one was just I just remember watching that. I mean, that was years ago, and it was just so forward thinking in the technology aspect and everything else. All the different masks, the the you know the the storyline changed so many different times and uh i i do i thoroughly yeah. liked one yeah. so i i would agree with you uh it's probably the best uh however i think that that uh mission impossible 3 kind of left its biggest mark on mark for me that's with with uh what's his name uh philip seymour hoffman is that the one with him i that is the best and i i will i will stand behind this that is his best that, role that's ever. because he gives a joker line in there that you love is it a Joker line? It's not no, a Joker. I'm just saying the it Joker would like say that. The Joker would say that. You're like, yes. yeah, he just because they're hanging him out the out the bottom of the plane, and, and he, they bring him up, and I'm going to do it again because I, you're, you're right. That's <laughs> exactly know. why. That's why. But I, yeah, but the, and he says, "Do you have a wife? Do you have a girlfriend? Something? Because I'm going to hurt her. I'm going to hurt her bad. You know, like and it's like, like it's like that was one of the best acting scenes that I've ever seen from Philip Seymour Hoffman, and he doesn't get enough credit for that that role. Anyway. But uh, what, what is, what's your favorite Tom Cruise movie? Man, uh, I, you know, like that. I, I'm not even. I wasn't prep. I didn't prep you for this. So. Yeah, so I, I mean, 
He, uh, he's got a ton of movies, so this is really hard. Yeah, I mean, a Jerry Maguire would always be Ooh, like somewhere like answer. somewhere up there. Great answer. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I, I don't know. Um, top, I, top Gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not, I mean, not a bad idea. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, Top Gun and uh, Days of Thunder. Like, Days of Thunder yeah. was another one that yeah. had that big, like, I remember buying Hardy's cups and hard. I had those yeah, little. little act- wasn't that the mellow yellow car? Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And City Chevrolet and all that. Uh, so super flow. But um, anyway, uh, mine would be uh, Vanilla Sky. Oh man, that that's a yeah, yeah. I I like that. Uh, yeah. That's a that's that really messes with your head. Messes so. with your head, and it's very dark. But it is also like I feel like that's one of his best roles, and it just keeps you guessing till the end. I really, really, really like Vanilla Sky, and I feel like I feel like a lot of people don't, but I I loved it. That was- yeah, I mean, I again, I think that one's a tough watch because you have to like you got to watch that like you got to pay attention. Absolutely, absolutely, I mean, yeah, under, exactly. Like yeah. at the end of the movie, you're still trying to figure out like what the heck. For happened, sure, so. I, yeah, I've watched that movie a ton of times, and it's so, still every time you're like, okay, I got something new from this. Yeah, I, I I think I'm gonna just, I, I would have to go into. Uh, I, I I think Jerry Maguire would probably be would probably be up there. I I really like that uh, that role of his on. I wouldn't disagree. Uh, that's that would probably be number two for me or whatever. I just that's a that's a fantastic movie. He he did awesome. There were so many Cuba Gooding Jr. Jr. and uh, Renee Zellweger. Yep. Uh, that that movie is that's a perfect movie. I mean, what's really what's the, what's the other one? Uh, you can't handle the truth. A uh, few good men. Few good men. Yeah, because yeah. he was a lawyer in there. Yeah, right? Correct. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you start thinking back. I mean, there's a there's a lot of movies. You look back to like Risky Business, Cocktail, All the Right Movie, or all, well, Cocktail. Yeah, right. Uh, that, cocktail, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all the bartender, right, all the right moves. Uh, Born on the Fourth of July. There, I mean, he's he's had Minority Report. Another one. Another <laughs> I, I one like that it. is wildly underrated. I like it. It's so, great. I, yeah. I, I think that again, people like they may not agree. There's a great movie. When I got LASIK. I actually told the doctor that I'm like, have you guys ever seen the movie Minority <laughs> Report? Because you know the scene where he, he they say, uh, you, got, you know, you got to follow your left hand to the food, follow your right hand to the bathroom. Don't take your 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 gauze yeah, off or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's what I felt was going to happen with when I had my LASIK. That's so. funny. It didn't work out that way. I, was, I yeah, can see good. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. The uh, uh, I, I look at Minority Report. Kind of reminds me of like a. Uh, Will Smith iRobot, right? Like I feel like those movies have like a lot in common on on how they feel. Yeah. Like out there in the future, kind of fun. I can probably watch them a couple different times. They're not going to make anybody's list, right, of no. top movies, but if they're on, I guarantee you sit down and you oh, watch them. Oh, absolutely. You know. Absolutely. iRobot's another one that people just don't give. That's what I'm credit. saying. It's actually I just Everybody's watched like, oh, it not yeah, too long ago and I'm like gr- it's a fun movie. I'm not going to like Watch it intently. It's like on in the background oh, as I'm doing something. Wait a minute. 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna drop some no- or drop another one on you here. What was the movie? Uh, it was a Groundhog's Day. Uh, oh yeah, tomorrow live, never live, ends or tomorrow yeah. uh, live die repeat. Live was, die repeat was yeah. like a tagline. Yeah, but it was, it was like also- tomorrow 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 something. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. That movie that- is. Awesome. Yeah, I, I absolutely love that. I I love that at the very end of that when him and her are in the barn, right? Yeah. And and how many you, times? Yeah. You think they just got there? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and then come to find out, he's like, no, I mean, like this is like my five hundredth time here. Or For something. sure. Like it For was sure. like some ridiculous number that he had done I it can't, over I, and over yep. and over. You yep. know, I can't beat this part. And yeah, I, like. You just can't get over yeah. it. You know? As far as uh, for for gamers and stuff, that's kind of oh, that was a video game like for sure. hands down. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. No, so yeah, I mean, he's just had a lot of a lot of fun, cool roles, a lot of action. He's definitely a an action star, in my opinion. I mean, I think that he is now. Where... I don't. I don't feel like he's always like. I feel like he tried to be uh, more of a serious actor, where he, you know, like I said, with the Jerry Maguire days, and uh, even the uh, interview with the vampire, like. Yep. I feel like he he tried to get into that role of being a serious actor, and then they kind of got uh, pigeonholed into being a action star. I don't I don't feel like it's really warranted, but it's he's still making awesome don't, movies every don't time. Don't you almost feel like the uh, the new Tom Cruise is Chris Pratt, like for for like getting pushed into like that role? You yeah. know, like 
It's like every time I see, I, I'm, I, and, and I, there's, and there's going to be some dislike towards Chris Pratt now too, publicly because of his thoughts and beliefs and stuff like that. So yeah, I could, I could see that. I, I just see like a little bit of like every time I turn on the TV and I see Chris Pratt, it's in a, in a new action role, right? Yeah. It's like, everything is a, a new action role. And he, he does great at him. I'm not, I'm not knocking him on that. It's just, that's kind of where I, I almost see like him and those yeah. two kind of line yeah. up. I hope that's not true. I hope, I hope that uh, Chris Pratt can, can break free of this. And I hope Tom Cruise does too. I hope that he'll do some, Oh man, actually, think think back. Uh, 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 was not the color of money. Was the color of money? Money. Mm, I don't know. It was it was uh, that series though. The color of money. The pool shooting movie with Tom Cruise. Thinking about that one. Nope. I think it's color of money. Might be. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, but I hope that he gets into that role. Er, he doesn't get too far into that, and he's, he continues to do uh, all the all the different oh. genres and, yeah. and branch out. Yeah. So back to Top Gun. Maverick. Back to Top Gun. Back to Top Gun. Another fan service. Another fan service moment. Okay. Okay. At the end of the movie, the end of the movie, he gets shot down by the the Gen 5 jet, right? Or whatever it was, right? And basically, like, their version of an F-35. And they did a really cool job, too, of telling you why they couldn't use F-35s, right? They couldn't get GPS there, and that's what that that plane needed to, you know, for that. So that's why they're in, like, old F-18 Hornets. Yep. The reality is it was probably like $11 million an hour to rent an <laughs> yeah. F-35. Yeah. So, uh, but, uh, but anyway, the, uh, plus the, you want to have some limitations and that's what oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, the, uh, the end, he gets shot down, right? He, he gets saved by rooster, which that was a little bit of a, that honestly, probably like second to, a uh, rooster playing great balls of fire. <laughs> the helicopter moment yeah. was like the next cheese moment. Yep, for yep. me, correct. Like, it was just one of those like where it's like, ah, you needed a transition. Uh, I get it, but that's that's terrible. But yeah. okay. Uh, but anyway, then they have to get out, right? So now because he get rooster gets shot down as well. So you got two guys that are down on the ground in enemy lines, right? And they got to get home. And the only working plane is an old 80s F-14 Tomcat. <laughs> God bless that. Four to- <laughs> is it a 14? Is it a 14? Yeah, I thought yeah. it was 16, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, no, F- F-16? F-14? Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be F-16. But our our, F-16? our sixth know. grade selves would know this for sure. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> it's the Tomcat. It's for the sure. Tomcat. Definitely Tomcat. I know all of those F- are Tomcats. F- I think F-16. I think he even said something F-14 like, what, what, are you, what are you doing with yeah, the wings right now? Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because the wings move in and out. <laughs> yeah, you for know? sure. I had a, yeah, anyway. Well, I had a toy figure. I had a Decepticon, a, man. I yeah, had Starscream. Yeah, yeah. I had a toy figure that was like a canteen that you opened up and you had this this F, uh, the, what, what Tomcat it was. They have the, <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are you going 16? I'm going to go 14. F- I'm going to go 16. F-14 Tomcat. Can we do this F-16? right now? Who's right here? Who's Who is, right? We're just going to we're just gonna Google this. Yeah. Uh, do it right now. Yeah, I can't find anything. Through my phone. <laughs> I'm gonna okay. take. The, I'm gonna take the win. How about right, that, was got, how about that was an F14. You're right. It was an F14. I thought it was an F16. But anyway, all right. Clint won ah, that round. There we go. All right. Give the thing with the, yeah. <laughs> Chad was wrong. Chad was wrong right. again. Uh, no, I. But that that whole scene when they jump in the F14 Tomcat <laughs> and, <laughs> and and take off like that was that was definitely throwing it back, right? Like it was one of those like where you know. They're in the old jet now. for sure. You know we're back in like the the glory day here, uh, and I, I I thought the ending was fun. Like you said, Hangman kind of comes into the you know to save the which day, is, which was is exactly what I expected. Like you know you knew he was coming in. He had he had so much depth in his character. I love that character. Yeah. Yep. It makes you wonder. I mean, so so here's here's a question. What's the chance for how big Top Gun Maverick? was or is still still in theaters what's the chance they do a spinoff so my thing is uh, and i want i'm glad you brought this up because uh my thought process is on this one is i don't want them to do it anymore i know that again like okay so look at look at jurassic park jurassic park you had a couple sequels they come back with jurassic world it's like okay this is awesome and then and they start tailing off <laughs> 
and 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 or, you or know, was it like this? It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> Jurassic, the, the new Jurassic World, isn't as bad as what everybody has been saying. It's not great, but it's not. It's not. I had a great time. With it. We'll, we'll talk about that on another video. Doesn't matter. I just don't want them to like. And I, I know we started off the thing off saying that I want you to continue the, doing these things, but like this would be a perfect sign off to the movie. Like, it would be a perfect. I, I, I just it. think we're in the world of, of spinoffs now. Like I look at like Disney Plus and all the Star Wars, all the Marvel. Like I just and, think we're in the world of spinoffs. And what I told my wife was, uh, you know, I would say the same thing about Mission Impossible, but every dang movie they come out yeah. with is awesome. Yeah, they just so keep, if Tom yeah. Cruise continues to keep that tight level, uh, a level of uh, of of greatness, then for sure um, keep doing them. He knows how to keep a keep a series going absolutely that's for sure. absolutely and 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 like i said it has, hasn't had a drop off so yeah. i'll take that okay we're gonna jump right to it now we've you we, we've hung you through here and and watched us google stuff uh so we got to jump to it chad what is your rating of top gun not Robert? as high as yours okay okay this is which is we're in like reverse roles now usually i'm, yeah, I'm yeah. usually like the yep, low yep, the yep. low one here uh, and the thing is, I'm going to give it a really high roll or give it a really high uh, rating. So I just think yours is going to be higher, but I'm going to give it an 8.3. 8.3. Yeah. I'm yeah. going, I have thought long and hard about this. I have too. I have too. I've been as high as an 8.5 and as low as a 7.9, but that 7.9 didn't make any sense. 8.2 is where I think, I think I put 8.2 for uh black widow and I put this one above that. I'm going 8.3. <laughs> a tenth of a point over Black Widow. Yes, <laughs> that's just disgraceful. It's a nine point two. Nine point two. It's a nine point two. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I, I. I have to put it like I'm not kidding when I say I have never been on the edge of my seat in a theater the way that I was with Top Gun. I'm not. And I have to rate. I have to rate the way that I felt walking out of that movie theater. Um. And the, man, and I mean, just, we're, we're 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 recording this long after the the uh you you saw it, so it's not a movie high anymore. No, no, no. I mean, I watch it. Well, we watched this like close to a month ago now. Yeah, so, yeah. uh No, no. It's just like I still find myself thinking about this movie, and it's like I remember. I think like last weekend, I was like looking down at my watch. I'm like, can I just sneak it in, like to go run and and yeah, watch it that's real what it's quick? All about. Like, it. I want to go see it again. It. Yeah. Uh, and you've I, only seen it once, though. Yeah, I've only seen it okay. one time. Yeah. yeah. Yep, and I, I think if I watch it a second time, I think I'm gonna have another like one month movie high. No, I, I totally agree. I think I I believe you will, and I don't disagree with that. Uh, I, I think that uh, that's ex almost exactly where I expect you to put it. I probably would have thought you put it at nine point three. You know, I mean, you might have shortchanged it a little bit, but uh. <laughs> <sighs> but no, no, seriously, seriously. I, I was high, as high as a nine four at one point in time, and I just felt like that's just that's just too high for yeah, me. Yeah. I, that's getting into like uncomfortably high. Yeah. Yeah, well, regardless, like I said, I, I expect you to be higher on this one than I did. But regardless, we have to uh, acknowledge the fact this is an incredible movie, and everybody should go see it. I mean, yeah. for sure. If you haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, so a, a nine is an instant classic. Yeah. And in my mind, this is an instant classic. Uh, you have it as a as a, as a a must-see, Yep. right? And, yep. Uh, and I think it is. It's a must-see. Uh, and for some of us, it's going to be an instant classic. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, but here's the thing: uh, without the fan service, can you still enjoy it as much as? No, and, and so, so I, th there stand is standalone. This is a standalone yeah, film. Yeah, so there is something to that. I think that uh, I, there, there's probably a few tenths of my point you know, of, of yeah. points in there. Uh, that are due to straight up nostalgia. Yeah, right. That might be for um, me too. And but. and and I I don't know if you can go. They try. They do a good job of setting it up, right? They do cut scenes back to the old, you know, like when Goose is dying, like all that kind of stuff. They yeah. they they try setting Very all that tactfully. stuff up yep. uh, to where you wouldn't necessarily have to watch the first one. You're just you're not going to – and I don't know if you can just go watch the first one and then watch the second one and still get the same yeah. feeling. It's like that was a part of my childhood, man. Yeah. Like, Well, here's the other question, building off that, and, and we're kind of getting off the rails again. But uh, if you watch Top Gun 1 right now, first time you ever saw it, yeah, would you still love it the way you do now? 
I, I, you know, that's hard for me to answer. Yeah. I just watched it the other day. I mean, I still love it. Still love right? it too. Uh, but when you watch it, it's like there's a lot of stuff that's really cheesy here. Yeah, but there, it's it's it, you you. That's a product though of of its era. That's a product of the '80s. Like every great movie from the '80s has a little bit of cheese factor to it, right? Like I would agree with it. I, I just don't think like that. That's what's so hard to like look at some of these older movies and be like. You know, oh, it's not as good as, you know, blah, 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 whatever, you know? And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, like, you're talking like they're really good at making movies now, yeah. though, right? Like, Correct. technology's different and everything else. They can make it look exactly like real life. Correct. So, I mean, it's hard to, like, it's hard to make that. I can tell you that I still watch it, and it's still a great movie, in my I, opinion. I would totally agree. And the acting, I think, is great. I think the script is fun. It still gives the same excitement. I don't Every know. Time, yeah, you get excited. Every time Tom Cruise checks his watch and flexes and <laughs> <laughs> no I, I i get it i just i i've asked this question to a few people that have watched it the first time and they've really liked it uh but i don't think that they got the same feel that we did well it's also one of those two that you have to like a you have to like a certain genre of movie though too right you gotta like for, action yeah movies. for sure yeah yeah like if you're if you're not actually i tell you what you can almost Honestly, be. Honestly, you say that, and I'm going to disagree. I agree with you, but like yeah, a certain type of movies, but like it is an action movie. I was going to say a chick flick as well. Is it's, it's going to be kind my, of a big chick yeah. flick, but no, I, I was getting ready to say yeah. that. But I just meant though, like there's certain there's certain people that won't like the Lord of the Rings, which are dumb people, <laughs> which are people with terrible taste. Yeah, we don't like those people. <laughs> like, honestly <laughs> but you know what i'm saying though i mean that's one of the greatest masterpieces of movie that's yeah. that's been made but it's like if it's not your if it's not your thing it's not your thing right yep, for so, sure for sure but well i tell you what i think uh i think as we you know go to close this out yep sign off let's go buzz the tower yeah buzz the tower uh i want i want to throw a couple things out that we're coming up with here because okay. we're gonna do we're gonna do this voting thing you brought up the Lord of the Rings. I know that Bob yeah. Steinbeck was one of the few people that I've ever heard in my entire life. He said, <laughs> he said the Lord of the Rings sucked, and the Lord of the Rings or the Return of the King was the only good movie. What I don't know, whatever. But we're gonna do a a TikTok battle of the franchises. Battle of the franchises. Top Gun can't make it yet, um, but Mission Impossible will. Mission, yeah, I say Mission Impossible, Mission Impossible been there. So, so we're gonna do that. We've got uh, what else have we got? We got. Uh, we're talking about doing like a little, uh, maybe an extended TikTok. Uh, what uh, Doctor Strange mul multiverse of madness yep. review? I want to do a live uh, where we talk to people and have some just some call in stuff. I want to yeah. do one of those lives. I want to do that. We've also got uh, 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 Lenore Zan, who is the voice of Rogue, going to be joining us real oh, soon. Oh, sugar. <laughs> yeah, call me sugar. <laughs> call me sh not sugar. sugar. Sugar, sugar. Yeah, yeah. So, which is really cool. Um, got a lot of stuff coming. Yeah. So I'm excited about it. We got a lot of stuff to do. Got a coming next, up next, next month. We're gonna have uh, uh, Nate Willits and myself. We're gonna be going to uh, to Snake Alley uh, Festival of Film. Yep. I'll doing, be at Dino's bachelor party, working on my golf game. Yeah, yeah. Showing him how much I've improved. Doing. Uh, we're gonna do some some interviews, hopefully down there. So uh, we got a lot of fun uh, fun things going. And so. Thor Ragnarok comes out real soon too. So Thor Ragnarok that, or Love and Thunder? Or, yep, but, that was you know, the one. One yep, or the yep, other. Yeah, one or the other. Yeah. We got a Thor movie coming out. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, with that, the credits are rolling. The lights are coming on. That's the end of the show.